To our top story and, and a big significant development today, the government has lifted the ban on genetically modified crops in the country after a 10-year suspension. Now, the uh, landmark decision has been lauded by scientists, no less. That's right, and they say that this is a step in the right direction if the country is to achieve food security. Naoma Sampao is working on that story and will bring us that report shortly. So there are reactions already from the market as well from experts who have uh, even been dealing with uh, GMOs over the years uh, much as it has been uh, in suspension uh, that is for the market and uh, let's now bring in the conversation Professor Richard Oduor the Director of Research at the Kenyatta University uh, Professor, how significant is this development of the lifting of the ban on GMOs? Mark, this is uh, very important. Um, and as scientists, we're really very thrilled with this particular um, announcement. It has taken 10 years to get this uh, ban lifted. And as researchers and as the director of research at Kenyatta University, I feel very happy about this, particularly given the fact that Kenyatta University is the only university in East and Central Africa that has got a biosafety level two laboratory where we do GMO work since 2005. At least, I mean, it's been going on for years, but uh, now that it, the, the ban has been lifted, uh, for the average viewer that is watching you right now, mm. tell us what is GMO? I get this question a lot more, and I'm beginning to think that probably we have not done a lot more of sensitization right. and public participation, probably. But the fact is that genetically modified organism is that particular organism that has DNA or genes from another source. For instance, if you have maize, you cannot cross maize with beans naturally. But genetically, if you find that you want the proteins from the beans, the reason why we eat, say, chapati or ugali with beans, it's because we know that ugali is only giving us carbohydrates. And then beans will give us proteins. And we need nutritious, a balanced diet. And therefore, in beans, we get the proteins. But what is it in the beans that is conferring this ability to express proteins in beans? It is organized in the genome of the beans. We have four letters that we call them nucleotides that repeat themselves in different sequences. And that is different sections of that genome, which is the DNA, is what actually express itself in a process that is a little complicated. We call it transcription and then translation and then the protein pops up. But the most interesting thing is that how do you then, for instance, make maize that, is, that contains protein? Because we really need proteins. For, Mark, I would ask you, when you eat gberi, for instance, do you separate the DNA from beans from that of maize? You mix all of it there. What that means is that you need the proteins from both species. And now genetic engineering is the most <coughs> interesting bit, that we are able, because beans and all some of these critical germplasms are already sequenced, we know which gene is responsible for what and where. Precisely, we have a mechanism to identify that gene, sequence it, use the modern technology, transfer it into the genome of maize, so that the maize that you're going to get has a bit of proteins. Oh, How yeah. bad can that I be? I understand. Okay, I understand a plate of gideri, um, but for those who don't perhaps understand the genome or sequencing, they see this as interfering with the natural order of things, and that is why there's apprehension to GMOs. So if you're giving me the example of a plate of yederi, why not keep it as is instead of having the maize with the, uh, you know, protein from the beans and interfere with that order of things naturally? And let me just respond and say that as it is right now, there has not been attempts to make maize protein, you know, to increase the protein content in maize. Just going by because, the example. Yes, yes, and, and, and I want to still to go on with that. The reason why this hasn't happened is, you know, there is this assumption that scientists are just waking up and then thinking about these things and transforming things left, right, and center. Right. That's not the case. A scientist like myself gets into that particular aspect of things only if there is need.
I'll give you, for example, a research that I've done myself. I, my PhD was in genetic engineering, where I was making maize that is drought tolerant. If you look at this country now, in northeastern, our cows are dying. They are dying. Why? Because we don't, almost all the animal feed has dried out. Okay. Now, and for your information, there is a grass called resurrection plant. It's called Xerophyta viscosa. It can dehydrate to 5% relative water content, meaning it can actually stay very dry. Okay. When your water comes back, when it rains, it revitalizes itself to 70% you know, normalcy All right. at the right time. All right. With those interventions that you're certainly getting to,